Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter Card Game Review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Supreme Leader. Supreme Leader is a uh, large player game in which you're going to be taking part in choosing between one of the many Supreme Leaders throughout history, whether it be Ho Chi Minh, uh, Eden Amin, John F. Kennedy, Fidel Castro, Adolf Hitler, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, so on and so forth, and utilizing their political power to gain you influence. Now, influence is important because without it, you're going to be eliminated from everybody else. Players who are eliminated will go join the UN and will work together to also remove players. At the end of the game, if you're the last person standing, you'll win. Or if there's two players standing, they're all going to have all the people who you had voted out or destroyed previously will decide who the grand supreme leader of the world is. So you need to use their votes, and it's very, very important. The game takes place with deliberation and buying things, and events are going to pop up if less players join the UN. And you're just trying to weed out the competition and show the other players that you are truly the next supreme leader. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game. All right, guys, so here's supreme leader and everything that it comes with. And as you can see, there's multiple decks it'll give you. First of all, there's this one here, which is basically what you're going to be able to purchase, whether it be religious zealotry, ambushes, or taking a hostage. Then you've got this deck over here, which is going to be events that will take place throughout the game after a player gets eliminated. There can be things like nuclear proliferation or even the empire from the ashes. So you're going to want to uh, basically do the, use these cards when somebody passes on and goes to the UN. Additionally, it will come with all of these different world leaders that you're going to be able to select one of two from. There's tons of different types and all of them have different... Uh, basically different alliances that are going to take part in. There's going to be green, yellow, blue, dark, and, and dark blue. Uh, and you can go ahead and pick one of these guys, though. This over here is basically your currency, and every single leader is going to have a certain currency they'll start with and gain throughout every round, as well as their influence, which is what they need in order to pick up these specific cards here. This is pretty much what you're going to get in the game, other than just the box uh, of the game. This is, of course, a prototype. But anyway, that's what you're getting. All right, let's come up and talk about it. To start the game Supreme Leader, you're going to simply start by taking the items deck and simply putting out two cards down in three separate columns and that's going to form six cards total. You're then going to have every player draw two leader cards from the deck after you shuffle it and have each one of them choose which leader they would rather have, whether it be Joseph Stalin or Augusto Piaget. Uh, each of the characters has their own affiliation as well as special abilities. They all do different things, which ranges anywhere from people not being able to vote them out, people uh, uh, preventing them from being uh, removed, maybe they get more money. And then, of course, at the bottom of the cards is going to be their uh, value or the amount of currency they produce every round and their influence, which is important in order to get these specific cards here. After everybody has chosen one of the two characters, remove the other ones from the game. That's all you're going to need. Then give every single player money equal to the amount of money represented on the bottom left hand corner of the cards. The game is then going to go into five separate phases. The first one is the production phase in which you're going to produce the resources based on the bottom of the card which you've already done for this first per portion. Then you're going to go on to the buy phase where you'll be buying the cards here. You can select any ones you want that you can pay for and as many as you'd like provided you have the influence as well. The UN characters cannot buy though and I'll explain that in a little bit. Deliberation will then happen where everybody talks amongst each other, gives each other deals or false promises and uh, determines who they're going to kind of want to vote out during the next phase, which is the elimination phase. Elimination phase, everybody's going to go put their hands up, one, two, three, point at somebody. The person who has the most votes on them is going to be removed. If it's a tie, you revote, and if it's another tie after that, it simply does not have an elimination phase, and the next round will begin. If somebody gets eliminated, there's an event phase that takes place. You take this deck here of events, shuffle them up, and then pick one card from the top and do what it says. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Most of the time, they're bad. Uh, on the occasion, you'll be able to resurrect a fallen card Comrade. On another occasion, you're going to have to deal with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Then it will go once again back to the production phase. Once the uh, basically once the game gets down to two players, then the UN will have the option to vote for the best ruler based on how well they played the game, similar to like the show like Survivor. Otherwise, if maybe two players are left, that one player then has a card that can destroy that other player, then that would be a full victory and that person would simply win, ignoring what the UN has to say. That is the basic idea of the game. Let's come back down here and talk about it, and I'll show you a round of play involving the characters. So here we are back to Supreme Leader, and as you can see, I went ahead and set it up for six players. Everybody has their currency listed in the bottom left-hand corner next to them, along with, of course, their card they chose, one of the two they got to look at. The rest of the cards that are not going to be used, these extra leaders just go off to the side somewhere there's going to be a pool or pools of additional currency which you'll be utilizing later in the game as you can see most players have different amounts of currency these three have five
five. You got one here for 10, 10, and then 15. I would also have set these, these uh, cards that you can purchase right here. There's two, two, and two. After that, I also shuffled this event deck up. Now that is done, the production phase would be done because we've produced. Then we're going to move on to the next phase, which is buying. And you're gonna go in clockwise based on whoever has the most money. And Cleopatra always has the most money. Cleopatra can then choose to buy any of these that she wants, provided that she has the influence. Well, there's four here, and this is a five. So even if she has the money, she can't afford the nuke. So she's not gonna be able to pick that up just now, but she can gain influence from other cards. But for instance, maybe she wants to buy this here, this proxy war. She can spend 12 if she would like, and then she can go ahead and pick that card up and put it next to her. And she can utilize it as soon as she gets it or later if she'd like, depending on the type of cards. This one says player chooses an opponent to lose their money or they skip one voting round then discard. So that's a pretty useful card to keep around. Whenever a card gets removed, a card gets put back in, ex in, in its place and the next player is going to go along. Most people won't be able to buy cards the first round, but some might be able to. This guy has a five influence and uh, this one only costs five. So he can actually pick up hostage, which is steal a card then discard this. So he can go ahead and play this card, stealing a card from Cleopatra that he normally couldn't have bought. And of course the next player will get a chance to go. Everybody's going to go around doing this until uh, everybody is finished. Once everybody's finished buying, then the next phase will begin, and that's deliberation. Everybody will talk amongst each other to determine who they need to remove. And when you remove somebody, they go to the UN. And the UN is basically a uh, independent group of people, or singular person, depending on how the game goes. And they're going to vote collectively uh, at the end of the game to determine who is going to win the game. It's also the remaining removed players from the game. So people don't want to go to the UN, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and you can read, all these guys have their different abilities and stuff like that. Some of them are more dangerous than others. Like this one here is Franklin. He says once per game for, uh, for, uh, for, he, he, uh, once per game, uh, he can vote twice. And uh, he can draw three cards during the buy phase and buy one of those for half price, then discard the other two. So he can choose to draw cards, pick one of them, and buy it for half. So he's a way of, he has a luxury of not having to buy things for an expensive cost. They all have their own unique abilities, though. And what's going to happen is everybody's going to put their hand up and point at somebody. And if there's a tie, vote again. If there's another tie, then it goes into a stalemate. Otherwise, though, let's say that Ho Chi Minh got eliminated. He would get removed. He would go to the UN by himself. Let's just go ahead and put him over here. And he is going to vote collectively, uh, or by himself in the next round, but then collectively for after, after that, and you'll see how that works. So he has been removed uh, from the game, which means that an event is going to pop up, and you're going to read whatever it says. This one says, before production, any player without any money in, the front, uh, in front of them basically is going to be eliminated. So is there anybody without any money? Yes, Joseph Stalin doesn't have any money. So he would get eliminated and he would go to the UN as well, ignoring the proxy war. So these events can be pretty bad if you're not careful and you always wanna have money, otherwise you can suffer some kind of problem. Then the next phase would happen, the production phase, everybody would get their money. She would get her 15, he would get his 12, uh, he, she would get her 10. Let's see if I can get even close to this. And then he would get his 10. And then another round of buying. But first, what would happen is the older cards on this side would get removed. This would all slide down and two new cards would pop up. So there's always gonna be new cards coming into the game. People are then gonna vote once again against each other and continue. If somebody gets removed once again, another card is gonna pop out and something good could happen. Like the fall of communism, for instance. Um, also to note though, I didn't explain all the abilities. Some of them do different things, which I'll talk about above. But the basic idea is once uh, everybody has been removed to the uh, to the voting phase, uh, or everybody's been removed uh, from the voting phase except for two players, the UN, the people here, are going to be able to start determine who the winner is. However, if, that, if one of the two people here has a card that eliminates somebody else, they can become the instant winner of the game, depending on what they have in front of them. These players will all vote collectively during the voting phase. So they still participate in the game during the uh, deliberation and elimination phase. However, if they do not vote together or there's not a majority of people that picks, uh, picks somebody, if they always tie, then their vote is going to be negated. So as a UN of one, it's not a big deal, but when it comes to two, they have to agree. And when it comes to three, it has to be a majority in order for somebody to get removed. These people can never uh, buy cards from here, but they can collect cards and gain cards. Maybe they want to uh, have a specific card. Maybe Napoleon can trade them a card in order for them to, have, to buy their vote for a specific reason or not. Uh, that is the basic idea of the game. One of these players is either going to win based on elimination or based on the fact that these guys have been selected one of them to win. 
thing. Okay, let's come up and talk about Supreme Leader. All right, so Supreme Leader. Uh, basically, this game is similar to Survivor and similar to games like The Resistance in which you're going to be voting for people. But where it has its unique aspects is, of course, the fact that you can pick up certain items and you can use those as part of your deliberation of, uh, ability. You're able to pretty much make any deal you want in this game. And... Uh, you're able to also break those deals whenever you want. Another interesting thing is the UN being utilized throughout the game. So when you're out, you're not necessarily out like a game like Werewolf. You can still have your vote count. However, if you do not agree in the UN, your vote will not count, which is also really unique and interesting. All the different players have a bunch of different abilities. I'll talk about some of the abilities. I'll talk about some of the uh, uh, cards you can get. And then I'll talk about some of the events really quick. Uh, here, he talks, says that you can destroy all strategy cards in play instantly. Only once a, a game, though. And once a turn, you can destroy one of them. Uh, Augusta Piaché says he can spend $14 to vote twice, or $21 to vote twice against uh, twice against a red player, or $21 to vote twice against any player. He can also choose one player to skip a voting round each turn, but never the same player twice in a row. He has a lot of power when it comes to the voting. Uh, Mobutu Sese Seko, once per game, can null an elimination decision, including for himself. Uh, Seko may spend $20 to eliminate any player, and each time he uses this ability, the cost increases by 10 so he's a destroyer, basically. Uh, Adolf Hitler. Hitler is able to switch his vote publicly at any time in the voting phase. Whenever someone votes in accordance with what Hitler wants, they double their income for the next production only. Wow. Very, very powerful indeed. Fidel Castro. Castro may only be eliminated via vote. Castro may also spend $20 to remain in the game so he can stay alive. So all these characters do certain things and they're useful in their own unique way. Some of them have less money but have a very powerful ability. And then you got the uh, event cards here, the... Uh, the uh, production cards here a firm handshake force a trade deal or money uh, force a trade deal of money or cards with another player and then discard this card monument man maximize your influence so you can go up to five influence with that card uh, coup de tay when you are voted to be eliminated randomly choose a new player card and remain in the game then discard so on and so forth and like i said the events there's a ton of them some of them are nasty some of them aren't so bad one player with an influence of five or uh, with an influence of five are up for elimination oh wow ouch uh, free states. The poorest player chooses one player to be ex ex excused from the following elimination round. Hmm, that's pretty decent. So that's how it works, right? So what do I think about this game? Well, it's fun. I really enjoy elimination-based games. If you guys have seen my reviews, you know that I'm a sucker for these kind of games. I like the difference in the fact that all the characters have their own unique abilities. You're playing for yourself and you're not really on a team. However, there are specific colors and the way they in in influence each other does make a difference as to how you're going to be utilizing them. If you are strong against red players, it's likely you're not going to mess with a blue player when there's two red players out there. Maybe you're going to use that blue player to help you in some, some way. Cards are useful, but they can also be your downfall. If you have too many of them, people might think you're a little bit too dangerous. And having too much power in this game can cost you. Not only that, at the end of the game, if you are uh, not playing very nicely or fairly, the people that you've eliminated, whether it be by false pretenses or whatnot, may not vote in your favor, just like in the game Survivor or the show Survivor. And in that case, you can lose, which is a nice twist to these type of games. I haven't seen that style uh, uh, working in these kind of games uh, so all that is good stuff what i can say otherwise is um the so the rules need to be a little cleaner i think but they once i kind of read them through understood how it worked the un was a little funky but saying that you can they could get cards but they couldn't actually buy cards and like well how else can they get cards then well you can get them by deliberating and talking and trying to making trades and whatnot um, some of the characters are very, very, very powerful, but that doesn't necessarily matter because people are more important than the characters themselves. You can utilize a bunch of people to vote a certain player out, even if like Hitler was in the game. He's, he's a powerful character because if you vote with him, you're going to gain production value, which is going to help you throughout the game. But at the same time, that character, as he gains more and more money and influence, is going to be uh, likely to have a target on their back. Um, Overall, it's a fun game. It requires quite a few players. You want to play with at least six players, in my opinion, for this game, or more. The more players, the better, because it makes the game more fun. You literally cannot play it with four players, and I wouldn't suggest it, um, even if that was you trying to make a variant for it. Do play with more players. More is better. It's just like a game like Werewolf. If you have a lot more to deliberate and talk amongst each other, it'll work uh, in a better way than that. It is an individual game, but you have to work cooperatively. Overall, the game is excellent. I really, really enjoy the style of game, and I think if you also enjoy the same type of games that I do, as far as the social deduction slash trader games work, you're going to enjoy this one as well. Do go ahead and check out Supreme Leader if it sounds interesting to you down below in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. 
If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out the game Supreme Leader in the description below. If you like those trader deduction style games, this is one you probably won't want to pass up, but you can go ahead and decide, see, decide for yourself. Also, go check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, from the blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, and our friends at thingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to dominating the world with you next time.